Video 17, subnetting 17. So far, all of the examples we've looked at, uh, we care most about how many subnets we need. And we really didn't care about how many hosts we need except to check and make sure that we had enough hosts. But what happens if we want to limit them so that we can account for future growth? In other words, future, future subnets. Well, let's see what we can do with a problem like that. So here's our table again. We're still in the fourth octet, and we've been given the network 172.16.25.0, 255, 255, 255, 0. So again, this is a class, well, it's not a class C address, right? It's actually a class B address, but we've been told that our network is has three 255s in it. So right now we don't really care about the class all we care about is the fact that we know this is network and that this fourth octet is what we have to deal with in order to create our subnets because that's where our hosts are so we have to borrow we can only borrow from hosts right so if all the hosts are in the fourth octet we can only borrow here in the fourth octet we need four subnets at least four subnets with 15 hosts per subnet using the smallest networks in other words the smallest subnets possible so that we can account for future subnets to be added later well let's see what would happen if we just chose four subnets well if i borrow from the first one again i i had subnets in here and then i said well let's just not use that let's just mentally do subnets if i borrow from this column i can get two if I borrow from this column, I can get four. Well, that would work, right? And certainly I can get 15 hosts here. But I said to use the smallest networks possible to account for future subnets. Well, how can I do that? Look at this. This number also represents number of hosts. Well, minus two, right? I have to subtract two. If I borrowed all the way up to here, I could only get one host, actually zero hosts. If I borrowed up to here, I couldn't get any hosts because I'd have to subtract two. If I borrowed up to here, I could get two hosts. If I borrowed up to here, I could get six. If I borrowed up to here, I can get 14. Well, I can't do that. I need 15. So if I borrow up to here, yes, now I can. So let's take a look at this column now. That's going to become our interesting column here now I'll actually be able to get two for eight subnets but they said use the smallest ones possible so in other words in order to use the smallest ones possible I need the least number of hosts in each one well I can't get it out of this one even though it's 15 because 16 minus 2 is 14 so I have to move up to here so I could get up to eight subnets I only need four right now so let's see what this looks like. Let's put my four network numbers, subnet numbers in here. I, I don't always put this column, by the way. Uh, later on, I'll begin leaving this column out. This is just for, just, uh, for accounting purposes. I know that my first network address is going to start here. 172.16.25.0. The next thing I need to know is what increment do I need to increase this by? Well, I've identified this column as my interesting column here. So I just look at increments. The increments are 32. Right? And again, let me just add this arrow so you can kind of uh, see what I'm doing. Eventually, I'll stop putting these arrows in. So I'm interested in this column. And the other thing I need to know is that I'm working in the fourth octave. So everything on this table is in the fourth octet. So uh, the next, if the network address of the first one is dot zero, and I need to increment the fourth octet by 32, right? 32 is the increment up here. So this is going to be 172.16.25.32. 32 more would be 64. Dot 25. Dot 64. Next one would be 172.16.25. Well, we need 64 plus 32. 4 plus 2 is 6, right? So it's going to end in 6. Uh, 6 plus uh, 
uh, 3 is 9, so 96. So I've got my four networks. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and carry this out one more just for purposes of getting this broadcast address. 172.16.25. Well, what's 96 plus 32? Uh, 6 plus uh, uh, 2 is 8, and 9 plus 3 is 12, 128. So this, I only need to get this broadcast address. Let's do the broadcast addresses. This one, the last one is 32, so the one previous is 31. 172.16.25.31. This broadcast address, one before 64, is 63. 172.16.25.63. One before 96 is 95, 172.16.25.95. And the last one, 128 minus 1 is 127, 172.16.25.127. I don't need this anymore. I can get rid of that. The first addresses are one higher than this one. So this one, just to make this quicker, let me just do this, dot 1. 172.16.25.1, dot 33, dot 65, one higher than 64 is 65, dot 97. The last address is going to be one lower than this, so dot 30 over here, dot 62, dot 94, dot 120. 6 is 1 before 127. Subnet mask, well, it's 224 in the fourth octet. 255, 255, 255, 224. 255, 255, 255, 224. Or I could do it in notation with the slash 27. I can do it either way, and both of these are correct. So these these mean that all all mean exactly the same thing. It's just some I gave in subnet mask and some insider notation, and I've done it. I now have the smallest possible networks because I chose the one that gave me the smallest ones in which I could still get 15 hosts per subnet, and I just identified this column as my interesting column here to work from. All right, so that's how we do it in uh, the fourth octet. Um, if I have, uh, if I have to work with hosts rather than subnets. Now in the next video, I'm going to do one more, but this time I'm going to hop up to the third octet, and we're going to do, going to have to uh, make some alterations to our chart. Uh, so let's uh, meet at the next video, video 18, and we'll uh, in that video actually what I'll do is we'll just extend this chart, I guess, and then in the following video after that I'll do a problem using the extended chart.